I was always trying to create something that sounded different and beautiful and unique uh, to try to act as a contrast to the, the city streets, you know, in New York. I wanted something that was like, you know, like, like, like you turn a corner uh, in some like bleak urban landscape and find a waterfall. I started playing violin when I was about eight years old, and I stuck with it. I, I guess I never had the sense to quit. I always loved the violin. It was my idea to play in the first place. And my folks, to their everlasting credit, got me lessons. I was born in Maryland, but I have no recollection of living there. Uh, we lived in Egypt for a couple of years, and then Egypt went to war with Israel, and we were uh, um, evacuated to uh, Greece. We, we lived there for a summer, and then my dad joined up with us, and he got stationed in, uh, at the naval base in Naples, Italy. And then after Italy, we got stationed in Newport, Rhode Island, which was kind of a come down from Naples, Italy, I have to say. I was like, oh man. Then we moved to New York City, and, and uh, it was in New York where I started playing violin. I went to the public schools in Northern Virginia. Amazing string program, great teachers. I played violin in my high school marching band. I don't think I was ever that cool again. I, it was amazing. You know, I, I had just gotten my first electric violin. I, it was actually just like a pickup on an acoustic that I had. And we had a, you know, we didn't have any wireless technology, so we had a cable running from this violin to a Marshall stack, like the same kind of amp that Jimmy Page used for Led Zeppelin, you know? One day, uh, a, a buddy of mine were, uh, uh, were on a field trip. It was an orchestra field trip, so we had our violins with us. And uh, we decided to skip the bus on the way back in order to hang out in Georgetown. So we were hanging out in Georgetown and we ran out of money. And, and uh, so we're like, well, how do we get home? And, and uh, he had his violin <coughs> and I had mine. And, and so I was like, okay. <laughs> Now, do you know the Bach double violin concerto? And he goes, well, yeah. So, all right, so we put our violin case out on the sidewalk and started in playing the Bach double violin concerto. And by the time we were halfway done with the Bach double violin concerto, we had enough money for a case of beer and cab fare. Oh, it was perfect. It was like, you know, and that was an idea got planted in my head then. <laughs> I have an English degree from Columbia University. When I was like 19, I would have told you that I was gonna be a writer when I grew up. The idea of being a, a professional musician it never really occurred to me as something that I could do. I didn't really start getting good until I started playing music on the street and realized very quickly that you either get good or you go hungry. The trick with being a street musician is you have to get a New York City street audience to stop and then give you money in order to cast a spell that would work on those people. You, I had to get good. I had to get good enough to cast a spell. Anytime I'd make a mistake, it'd break the spell. And once the spell is broken, they're gone. There is no better training ground for being a stage musician than being on the street. 
in a way, I don't think I create my music at all. I think it comes from someplace else. And I just kind of, you know, provide a conduit for the music to kind of come through me and out to the audience. Sometimes the, the, the song will land in my head completely formed and then I have to take it apart and reduce it down to its various elements so I can then build it back up again using a loop sampler, using all of those you know, pedals of mine. And the first thing is rhythm. So like whatever the song is, it's about that rhythm part. It has to work you know, in time so that it's even. Even in time, even in pitch, and my punch in and punch out with my feet, my punch in and punch out has to be spot on the downbeat so that it's, it, it becomes seamless. All of that happens in that first pass through. And then I start layering up from there. So the key to, to making one of these loop pieces happen is to find that initial rhythm part whether I'm playing it up here, or I'm playing pizzicato, or I'm playing bass, it varies a lot, but that first rhythm part is the key to how the whole rest of the thing comes together. Um, you know, like, like for instance, with Papa Was a Rolling Stone, I, I start with a, 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 a like like a, a, a string part, dig 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 dig, and I do that four times, and then that's my loop. And then I add the bass, I add, I add a couple, you know, and all of these different things and all these different parts come together to make the whole thing. With most bands, you have different players, all of whom are bringing a different part to the song. All of, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm the drummer, I'm the bass player, I'm the guitar player, I'm the string section, I'm the keyboard player, and sometimes I'm the vocalist. It, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get more into that lately. I, I, you know, what I'd love to do is figure out how to beatbox. One of these days I'm going to figure out how to beatbox and then I'm going to rule the world. <laughs> but until then, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to keep on fiddling, I guess. Education is very important to me. So uh, one morning, bright and early, I uh, took all my gear to a elementary school in Mukilteo, right over here, and uh, um, set up and, and uh, played my first assembly performance. And the kids loved it, and I had fun. And, and, and I started like realizing that there was something I could give back. And they, they kept inviting me back to the same school year after year, and, and then you know, the first year that I played there, I asked, you know, show of hands, you know, how many of you play violin? Like a few hands go up, you know. How many of you play viola? A few less hands go up, you know. And so, I, you know, they kept having me come back, you know, year after year. And then the fourth year I went back, I actually remembered that question. I was like, hey, how many of you play violin? Like half the hands in the school go up. And I'm like, Okay, how many of you play viola? A bunch more. How many of you play cello? A bunch more. And then I found out later that they had had to hire more orchestra teachers to fill the demand that they were actually having multiple periods of orchestra during the day to deal with the demand of kids wanting to be in the string program. That's when it dawned on me that maybe I should be playing in school, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just like, it's like, you know, the universe, you know, talking to you going, hey, maybe you can make an actual real impact in people's lives. I love to feel that sense coming back from the kids of their horizons just got opened up. You know, everything that they thought they knew about the violin has been completely demolished. You know, and for kids who are playing a violin, the box that they think they're in, you know, like, this is what I can do with the violin. It's, it's, it's all in this box. You know, that I, I walk in and just, boom, that box is gone, you know, and there's nothing left 
except a big horizon, and you can go anywhere you want. You're not in a box. That's what it's all about. And also show them that a grown man is going around playing violin as his career and is having an absolutely wonderful time with it. And that that is completely acceptable. My first band, all right, my first band was Hacksaw George and the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. I swear to God, that's what we called ourselves. I had all these different bands, I was, and I played all these different styles. I mean, I played every, every kind of style from, I mean, I, I did this thing where they had me playing violin in some kind of heavy metal rock opera. I've always been involved in different band projects, but I also did solo stuff as well. And what I kept discovering was that the solo stuff almost struck people as, as like, it's almost like a magic show. It's like, it's really different from anything that you're normally used to hearing or seeing. All of these different things, all these different projects, from like the Children of the Revolution to the Guarneri Underground to Sin City back in the day. I have lots of fun playing with bands, um, but it all comes back eventually to me playing the violin solo. I go off and have these adventures, and then it always comes back to that. That's where I began, and that's where I'm, you know, I'm, I'm starting now to put my focus there. I'm doing finally what I think I should be doing, and it's really, really exciting.